All right, Sean. Joining me now, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham and Louisiana Senator David Vitter. Gentlemen, uh, welcome back to the program. Thanks for being with us. Thanks, Sean, Thanks. very much. All right, we, we're dealing with the issue. Number one, the defense cut issue is of major concern in all of this. Uh, both of you shaking your head here at the same time. Lindsey Graham, we'll start with you. Uh, do we know what the final adjustment on that was today? No, we don't. But here's the way you build a defense department. You look at the threats the nation faces. You don't pick a number out of thin air and start implementing cuts. You look at the capabilities, threats, and reforms. And I don't like the idea that we're going to pick a number out of thin air and start reducing the Defense Department. And I can tell you in terms of the trigger, the Medicare part is all about doctors and hospitals. Since 1997, we've been very reluctant to reduce payments to doctors and hospitals. You can't find a Medicare doctor now almost. So the idea that that 50% is going to become reality in a new Congress is non-existence. I'm very worried about $540 billion being cut from our defense budget uh, just and as an arbitrary number. Is that a deal killer and for you, Sean, Senator? And Sean, Brett Baer is right. Uh, the PowerPoint put out by the Republican leadership says fully 50% of the automatic cuts if the trigger is pulled come from defense. That's going to be a big, obvious point of discussion the next day or two. You know, Sean, we got two wars going on. You know when that young Marine asked, am I going to get paid? The answer is, yes, sir, young Marine, you're going to get paid. But we're also going to give you the equipment to fight and win the war. We're going to give you the capability. And we're not going to doom your children and your generation to becoming Greece. So we need to make sure the debt ceiling is uh, uh, increase, but also get this nation out of debt. And the number one obligation of the federal government last time I checked was to defend the nation from threats, foreign and domestic. You need a robust defense department to do that. Yeah, uh, Senator Vitter, I, what it does say in the PowerPoint is total reductions would be equal, equally split between defense and non-defense uh, programs. Right, I, don't, so I, don't, I don't see that as 60 percent, but 50. So, no, I said 50 percent. Oh, okay. I'm 50%. sorry. I, 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 missed, but, I, I didn't hear you But, of course, that's way, way more than what defense represents as a percentage of the budget. It's well, not even way close. More. It's way, and, way more. And it also does hold out the possibility for tax increases as well, because, as right. the president was saying, everything's on the table. Uh, based on your early indications, and I know you're not in the Nancy Pelosi category. we got to pass right. the bill to find out what's in it. Right. I assume both of you will read the bill ahead of time. Are, do, do these overall descriptions of the bill make you more inclined to support it, not support it? Senator Vitter, we'll start with you. Well, I've had concerns every step of the way, just based on the fundamentals, that even doing this, which is moving in the right direction, still means we're increasing our debt seven trillion dollars over the next ten years. We're still moving in the wrong direction. So that core concern still remains. Obviously, I'm going to look at all of these details, but I'm concerned that this is an accomplishment only in Washington, only politically. It's not much of a co an accomplishment fiscally or in the real world. I'm going to get back to that in a second. Senator Graham, more inclined or, or because of the defense cuts, cuts are you uh, disinclined to, to support this? Well, I don't have a lot of faith that this joint committee is going to do more than other committees in the past has. It's probably going to be deadlocked over tax increases. They're going to want tax increases. We're going to say no. The triggers take effect. We're not going to cut 50 percent from Medicare to get to the number by reducing spending to doctors and hospitals. Congress always forgives that when it comes to the time to make it real. And I really do fear that we're going to jeopardize our ability to defend this nation if we're looking for the Defense Department to pay the major burden of this deal. I know this is tough politics. I know our leaders are working against people who really don't want to do anything to change the size and scope of the government. But details matter. Yeah, I, I, details do matter. Now, the, Senator Bitter, you were bringing up a very, very key point that I think a lot of people in the country don't understand, is we're passing this bill, debt limit is going up, but in this 10-year period of time where we're, quote, you know, saving, you know, $2 trillion, because right. of baseline we're, budget, because of baseline it, budgeting, and right. we, we increase, people don't seem to understand this, the 2012 budget's going to be 8% higher than the 2011 budget. The, right. the 2013 budget's going to be 8% higher than the, exactly, the 2012. Sean. We're so, cutting only because we're cutting from a baseline, which is going like this. Yeah, well, That's expl the explain only this. This is very key. Cutting. We're not freezing yeah. spending. I mean, spending's going up 8% a year. 
this is only cutting in Washington. This doesn't pass for any cuts in the real world. And I'm afraid it's only a big accomplishment politically in Washington. I'm afraid it may not be much of any accomplishment fiscally and in the real world. You know, everybody's been running around concerned about the credit rating, credit rating agencies Tuesday. What they've also been focused on is long-term getting a hold of unsustainable spending and debt. And they've thrown out pretty consistently this magic minimum $4 trillion figure. Well, this is $2.5 trillion, way below that. So I'm afraid maybe we're avoiding default, which, of course, I want to do. Well, let me, let maybe me, we're ensuring let me, let me downgrade that. on Mo our credit rating. Moody said on Friday that the limited magnitude of both the Boehner and the Reed plans uh, that was put forward uh, would not put the nation's AAA credit rating back on solid footing. Quote, reductions of the magnitude now being proposed if adopted would likely lead Moody's to adopt a negative outlook on the AAA rating. And the chances Sean, of... That's exactly, yeah. that's exactly what I'm saying. I want to avoid what? default, but I don't want to ensure downgrade of our credit rating, which means interest right. rates go up and Americans are really hurt. Yeah, so what the bottom wish. line here, I think Moody's was saying pretty much, if you don't hit our $4 trillion figure, which Correct. this doesn't come near, that default now seems inevitable, Senator Graham. No, well, down, it wouldn't be default, right. but it would I'm be sorry, downgrade. I'm, 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 interest I'm, rates, I apologize. The, the that's downgrade the would be, I'm making, uh, but, right. it's but it Sunday. would really hurt to work in Americans. Good. <laughs> I think this is fair to say, that the people who got elected in 2010 are fighting like hell to change the way Washington works. We're having a conversation we've never had before around the debt ceiling, and that is paying a dollar for dollar any increase. We're trying to push the envelope with one house of the Congress, and David is right. At the 30,000-foot view of things, even if everything worked perfectly, you're adding 6 to $7 trillion mm -hmm. in debt, and it really is not fundamental change. But in terms of the subject matter, it is change. And at the end of the day, Sean, we're slowing the growth of the government. We're still adding a massive amount of debt. Instead of running toward bankruptcy, we're walking toward bankruptcy. And the way you change things is you fight hard and you get more numbers. Passion and numbers have to go together. I hope the American people are watching this debate because you're pretty clear, clearly can see who wants to grow the government and who wants to reduce it and who wants to have a strong defense and who's willing to sell in, the defense department it, out. One of the things, though, is 75 percent of the American people want a balanced budget amendment. I'm That's not sure in this deal. What I'd like to know is whether or not Harry Reid would have the power to table this in this October 1 to, to December 31st deadline. Uh, that's a question we need answered as well. Guys, good to see you. Thank you for being with us. Thanks, Sean.